Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, so as was said, uh, Murray Goldrick, CEO of Marine Learning Systems, and my good friend and co-presenter, Jeff Joyce, who's uh, Director of Terminal Engineering at, uh, at BC Ferries. And what we're here to talk about today are the lessons learned by BC Ferries as they implemented the C program, Standardized Education and Assessment, which is really a blended learning approach, a very novel blended learning approach to familiarization training. So the last bullet here that you see, that's the most important po uh, part of the talk. Jeff's going to do that one. I'm really just here as the warm-up act. I'm going to tell you a little bit about e-learning and a little bit about the structure of, of, the, uh, of the C program. So the very first thing that I want to say, uh, just to get it off the table because there are often skeptics, is that e-learning works. It really does work. We have a tremendous amount of experience now and a tremendous amount of research. As was mentioned, my background is I was a faculty member at a large research university in Canada and we were evaluating e-learning, whether or not students could learn well. And so we divided students into groups. We taught students purely online. We taught students face-to-face -face in the traditional way. And we taught students in blended approaches as well, where they had access to classes and access to e-learning environments as well. And this was back in the 1990s. And what really surprised us at the time, because we had no experience in this, is that students learned equally well, if not better, online as they did in the traditional mode, in face-to-face -face classes. But what really got us excited is that what we found out is that in the blended learning approach, where they had access to both lectures and online materials, they learned significantly better than either online alone or face-to-face -face alone. So that was huge. And as I say, that, well, it's huge, of course, because, you know, we'd been teaching the same way now for like a thousand years, and suddenly we had tools to actually improve retention, improve depth of knowledge, these kinds of things. So that's one study, and you can make studies kind of do anything you want. Fortunately, there have been a lot of studies since then, thousands, and probably the best one is one that was done, it was a meta-analysis by the U.S. Department of Education in 2010. And a meta-analysis doesn't do original research, it just collects all of the research to date, and there were about a thousand studies, and tries to see if there is a common outcome, you know, and in this case, does e-learning work? And fortunately for us, they determined that exactly as we determined that, uh, you don't have to read these, by the way, just, just their, their outcomes, but number one, that indeed, online learning was at least as effective, if not more effective than face-to-face, -face. and the second one, which was that blended learning is significantly better than either of the other two. But I bring up this study because they also came up with a third conclusion, which was really interesting to me when it came out. And that is that the benefits of blended learning are discipline agnostic. It doesn't matter what you're teaching, blended learning still produces better outcomes, better retention, deeper knowledge, these kinds of things. And so that was fascinating. So this kind of served as a backdrop then to when Jeff and I started working together in 2007, 2008, uh, because uh, they, were, they, were, they were piloting a process to replace the job shadowing approach to familiarization training. And that process was going to use, of course, blended learning. And it's called, as I said before, the C program. And so this is just a bit of a graphic that shows you what the C program looks like. I'll generalize greatly. It applies to almost all positions now at BC Ferries, but let's just pretend we're a, a, a deckhand going through this. So instead of me following somebody around for two or three weeks and learning the ropes that way, Instead, there's a very structured blended learning program here. So first, I go online, I do some self-study using the BC Ferries uh, learning materials. Uh, I learn what it means to be a deck and what it means to work at BC Ferries, you know, the routines that I need to know, all, all these kinds of things, safety, just about everything. I learn that at my own pace, and then I take an exam. It's an online exam. If I do sufficiently well on that online exam, I go to the, the middle section, the blue section there, which in the case of a deck hand is on vessel, it's on board. And so I go as a trainee, I'm met by a trainer, and of course I come with a foundational level of knowledge that the trainer can rely on. So now that part of training, the face-to-face -face part, is very, very efficient. And that lasts, I think, five days for deckhands. And then I go into the third bar, which is the clearance day or the assessment day. And that consists of four parts. There's a knowledge test, which is, again, an online exam. Uh, there's a skills test, which is a demonstrative exam, put on that fire suit. Uh, there's a reasoning, like an oral test. Can you reason about things? Can you use the knowledge that you have and assimilate a, a, an action plan? And finally, there's a meeting with somebody in a position of authority. So if you're in the deck department, it might be with a chief officer or a, a master. And that just looks at, can I communicate? You know, what, what's my attitude like? These, these kinds of things. So this was deployed at BC Ferries, first in pilot, and then it got started rolling out through the uh, positions as part of this, the overarching Sail Safe initiative, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, a, a large safety culture initiative. And they were deployed together, and Sail Safe had some wonderful results. It's very hard to pick apart what, you know, which parts of Sail Safe 
you could attribute these wonderful results to, you know, how much of it is part of the C program, how much of it is part of the other sales safe initiatives. But overall, it, I mean, very few would argue that none of it is attributable to the improvement in training. So you'll just have to figure out how much is, is attributable to this. But let's look at some, some of these results. First of all, on time performance, it went up. And that was interesting because at, the, at this same time, uh, on time performance was taken away as one of the criteria against which captains were judged. But on time performance went up. Time loss injuries went down over this period by about 60%. Insurance claims costs went down over this period by about 75%, and that's huge, right? And days lost due to accident annually, employee days lost due to accident, went from 12,000 to about 7,500 over this period, and I recently got the numbers for fiscal year 2016, and they're down to 4,000 now, so there's a continuing improvement here over many, many years. So that's phenomenal. Why does it work? Why is blended learning help produce some of these numbers? I'm not going to go through this. I'll just tempt you with a bit of information. You can always ask me later, but I want to get Jeff up here. Um, lots of reasons, as I say, corner me uh, over dinner if you want to. Uh, but before I do bring Jeff up here, I just want to say one thing. BC Ferries is a real pioneer in this. I mean, they, they built this program of training from first principles. And there was really no precedent for this in the maritime industry. I mean, there certainly was precedent blended learning in other industries, certainly in higher education, but not in the maritime industry. And so they were willing to take a risk, and more importantly, willing to share their experiences, for better or worse. Nobody knew exactly how it was going to work out. And it's because they shared their experiences that now we have more and more organizations like these ones that are moving to a blended learning approach. And I doubt there's one up here that hasn't actually talked to Jeff to find out his experiences and other people's experiences at BC Ferries. Uh, and that's exactly what Jeff is doing here today. He's going to talk about the lessons learned in implementing this. So, I think I'm seven and a half minutes, so you should have seven and a half minutes. Uh, please come on up. So, good afternoon and thanks very much for the introduction, Murray. It's my honor and pleasure to speak uh, to you today about the SEA program. I feel compelled to speak about this program because I've seen what it does at BC Ferries and I, I'm a firm believer that it can you know, positively impact other companies in the industry. And I also believe that uh, training is the keel upon which an effective safety culture is built. I, I'd also like to offer, as Murray did, to dialogue with anyone that would like to hear more about this uh, due to the shortage of time. But let's get started. So we'll start off with executive support and engagement. Although support and, and uh, buy-in is necessary at all levels, if there's not support from the top, the initiative will definitely fail. As the team and vision C, our senior executives needed to understand and appreciate the C vision, as well as the risks in, and benefits in order to be supportive. Fortunately, was, uh, not only was our then Chief Operating Officer, Mike Corrigan, a champion of safety, he feels the same way about effective training. And just one correction on the introduction there, I wasn't responsible for the sales safe program. It was Mike. Um, take as much time as you want. <laughs> <sure. Yes. laughs> Mike frequently presented at various venues on SEA. He spoke at our trainer conferences on an annual basis. We have over almost 600 trainers in the company now. And uh, he presented at uh, the trainer conference, his annual employee engagement sessions, and his newsletter as well. He spoke about C. He also challenged me on a regular basis about the sustainability of SEA. So gaining and sustaining that uh, great support from the very top was a critical lesson learned. As the development of uh, SEA continued, I decided it was critical to get each operational vice president to also sign off on their program's design. So that was one example of how we tried to ensure we did everything we could to create that ownership and advocacy within the executive. This also enabled them to set clear and, uh, and objective expectations down the ranks in their departments about SEA. And additionally, I also, probably most importantly, received a ton of excellent feedback from them that really helped shape their programs and the emphasis on the word there. So executive support, very important, but we also need the frontline inclusion and engagement. We felt it was really important to gain that bottom-up ownership across the fleet. So how did we do this? So as the design process for each program began, we sought out subject matter expertise from the front lines. I wanted to have those future trainers involved right from the beginning, from the design through the development, the rollout, and ultimately the sustainment. So the best of that uh, group we uh, recruited as initial trainers and champions of SEA, 
And I believe it's a fair statement uh, that our employees truly believe that SEA was not something that was done to them by management. It was something that they had been a part of and can be proud of. A training content is key. The scale of this project was fairly large. We had a total of 35 programs. That's another thing that uh, Mike uh, challenged me on quite regularly, how many programs actually were part of SEA. 35 total programs impacting approximately 3,500 employees. So I wanted to work with professional instructional designers and I wanted to work with e-learning experts in order to ensure we had accurate content, logical flow and structure. We all know that there's a big difference between reference materials and learning materials. And we also know that there are good, uh, uh, good ways of teaching and ineffective training methods as well. So the designers tried to leverage the, uh, the subject matter expertise within the, within the fleet by taking the previous approach job shadowing notes that people had cobbled together and pulled those into the C program as well, as well so we didn't throw that baby out with the bathwater. Around program rollout options, uh, deciding what position to start with was an important decision. Do we take a top down or a bottom up, a stripe, a vertical stripe or a diagonal stripe across a number of departments? Various approaches can work, but we opted to start with a deck department with a bottom up approach, and let me explain why. So deck was our initial focus. Our two biggest risks in the company are around shipshore interface incidents and navigation incidents, and the deck department is obviously involved in both. The bottom-up approach meant that as the more junior employees actually uh, advanced in the company, they experienced the same training model that they'd helped build at the uh, more junior ranks. And it was also more efficient because as we, as we uh, built the technical material for the actual learning content, we could leverage that material as we went up higher in the rank, in the department, I should say. So was the approach perfect? Absolutely not. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we learned was that uh, some of the supervisors were less engaged than others and that was simply because they hadn't been as exposed uh, to the C program as their direct reports, these employees that had gone before them. Sustainment and improvement. So we've heard uh, today training is a forever initiative. Sustainment is a critical consideration. So my recommendation to the industry is to start conservatively for a couple of reasons. One you avoid those big resource decisions. You don't have to make a huge decision right off. And more importantly, I think, as you gain success with these pilot pieces, it's amazing how quickly resources can be made available. And that's indeed what happened at uh, BC Ferries. Should not expect to have all the answers at the start, so taking a fail fast, fail small, learn, and uh, progress approach is also recommended. Documenting our processes and reviewing our progress against the plan were also critical tasks to ensure the C vision was attained. And finally, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So having a learning management system that provides that data, which we, we, we do have, as well we, we received additional data from supervisors, for example, with freshly trained employees. That allowed us for, to continue with the critical uh, continuous improvement and measuring success. So in conclusion, our key recommenda recommendations to industry after over eight years in the process, to start engage all levels of employee from top to bottom in the creation and delivery. You'll hear the best ideas, but you'll also hear warnings that you should uh, consider. You also create buy-in uh, through real ownership of the program, and that'll help facilitate the, uh, the change management. Start now and start small. Biggest impediment in this is, is our natural desire to try and have everything all figured out before we start, and the, the fact of the matter is it's quite impossible. So start with a pilot, learn from it, and expand. You'll learn so much more along the way. Over and over and over again, make sure people hear and understand three key things. First of all, why? Why is this important? It's obviously about safety, safety performance and operational excellence. Number two, what's, re what's required to actually make this successful? Inclusion, input from frontline em employees, that'll create the ownership you need to make this sustainable. And number three, talk a lot about how it will be done. So realistically, incrementally, while gaining experience along the way. So as Murray mentioned, we didn't have a maritime precedent. Fortunately, you do. Uh, I encourage all, all of you to learn from our mistakes and wins, talk with us, visit us, and uh, see SEA in action. And finally, I think we should get excited about this opportunity. Somewhat selfishly, I'd, I, I can say that the creation of SEA has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my working life. Uh, from an altruistic perspective, our employees are a number one asset, and frankly, they deserve good training. Thanks very much.